Hey everybody, welcome here to my channel. I haven't posted in a while and because basically one, I've had a lack of motivation and two, I've had a lack of inspiration. And every time I open up the game, I'm just having nothing really come to me. I'm not building anything that's worth sharing at the moment. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the diorama entries for this month's challenge. It's really great to see what everyone builds and it's a way for me also to get inspired and um, by what you guys build, um, etc. But yeah, um, sorry I haven't really been posting. I haven't really had anything to post. Uh, but I'm hoping to um, start building something. Um, maybe you guys can give me some suggestions down below of what you'd like to see me do. But hopefully I pick up a little bit soon on my creativity. So yeah, it's a bit lacking at the moment, which I think is normal for most people when they do creative things, whether it's doing art or design or creating something. Uh, I think we all kind of hit that kind of block at some point. I'm having it right now. But anyway, we'll get through it. So today I wanted to share with you a quick little tutorial on how to set up a scenario if you wanted to build a diorama. Um, I love doing dioramas. Sometimes they're a great way of just kind of putting your um, focus on one theme or something into a small area and you're not overwhelmed by a ginormous map or an entire park. Um, that's why I love the diorama challenge so much. But today I want to show you how to kind of create a um, the setup, the land and everything for your diorama. So you want to go ahead and actually just build a coaster or anything you wanted to do, a flat ride, um, sort of combination or a water ride or something. Um, I'm going for like a coaster because it's always good for a diorama. And I actually just wanted to play around with this new mod, which is which is an inverted um, roller coaster, typically styled after the Interman ones. Uh, so you can do like a impulse coaster, which is what I wanted to do today. Very similar to Wicked Twister um, or Vertical Velocity or any of those kind of rides. Great, great fun. I actually really enjoy them. Um, but yeah, just kind of just threw one of those together, um, nothing special. And then I'm just going to go and show you how I go ahead and make, make the land. This is quite a simple coaster and layout for what I'm showing you, which makes it quite easy for me to show you today. But you can obviously do whatever layout you wish to desire to do. Um, so yeah, it's so basically once you've got the coaster kind of done, I'm just going to check everything's okay with it, give it a quick little test run, etc. Put the entrance and exit just kind of down. Um, before I save this as a blueprint. You need to save your coaster as a blueprint uh, before you actually move on um, to do the actual scenario map um, so that you actually have something to put down. So what you want to do is, is go ahead and measure out the size of your attraction. So I'm using paths. I'm just going to draw some paths along one side to like a length that I think looks good and then along the other side. Now I did made a little mistake here whereas the smallest map you can build in Pocket is 20 squares and I actually measured out 10 squares so ignore that but the method still works the same. So once you're happy with kind of with the size of your map you want to go ahead and take the colouring tool and then I like to basically go along one square at a time and count them to 10. So we go along in black to 10 then when I get to 10 I switch the colour to another colour that's completely different um, obviously you can choose whatever colors you like. I'm going to choose red here. Then we're going to go along the same, count 10 squares, and then switch back to the other color. Um, sometimes the, well for me anyway, the paths glitch and you can't paint them for some reason. But that's fine, we just kind of get around that. Um, so now I'm doing another 10 squares in black again. Then I'm going to get to 10, switch back to red. And this goes on and on until you've covered up the whole map area of what you want to do. I find this method a lot more efficient for counting squares rather than trying to count them with your mouse going along the grid and losing count etc. Um, using like a coloured little system is the best way. As you can see there I had those little path issues of colouring but never mind. And then we're just going to go along and finish in those last little bits. And then you can easily count these by counting the tens. So we've got like a 40 by 10 there. The 10 will become 20 because of the restrictions in scenario editor. But once you've got it measured out, remember those numbers or write them down or whatever. And also make sure that you have saved your ride as a blueprint. And then you're going to quit this map. You're going to click on Scenario Editor, click on New Scenario. And this will take you into a new map. Then you want to take those numbers that you've written down or remembered and length and width, you're going to put them in. So this was 20 by 40, I believe. Like I said, you can't do 10 because 20 is the lowest number. Um, so you put those in and then you're going to click Generate Flat Land and then click Generate. Um, this will then kind of make your map. And then you click finished and then you have it there you go so then you're going to take your blueprint and you're going to just place it in uh, into this map um, where you kind of want it to sit so now you're going to click on the icon that looks like the entrance and you're going to click on owned and you're going to drag the land so that you own it so you can build on it and then you're going to click unobtainable 
and you're going to click somewhere where, uh, where you want the entrance for the map to be. Then you also need to do the same for the depot. So it's about five or six squares in width. So you want to do that uh, wherever you want to put that to. So I'm just going to put it over here. And um, it's about three squares inwards from the map, I think. So you take your depot, place it on the edge of the map or wherever you want to put it. So I'm just going to put it there. And then also you're going to click on the little icon there at the bottom, the little yellow house, and also click on the entrance um, and put that where you want the entrance to be. I like to do two just to make it like two squares wide. I think it looks better. And then click on the little uh, park entrance icon, click on the little blue person at the top, and you're going to want to put down those spawn um, people peeps. Um, that's really cool. So then you're going to click on the little research tab and then you want to click all the things that you want to be available for you to build actually in this map. If you don't click those things or you miss some things out, when you go to actually play it, there will be things missing that you might want to add into it. So it's important to click all of those things. Unless of course you're making a scenario where you want people to research stuff, then you can set that up all in here. But for the purpose of a diorama, I like to make sure all everything's clicked. So that is basically how you set up a map for a diorama. If you wanted to do whatever diorama you wanted to do, dioramas are very popular in like model building and stuff. And you might see things on YouTube where people build little scenes that are like, like slices of cake taken out of a real life situation. Um, that's what I love about dioramas, especially building in Parkitect. And also to have like such a small piece of land to work on really makes you put all your creativity into it. And um, you're not overwhelmed by this ginormous map around the rest of the attraction. So it's a really nice way if you wanna play around with some themes and things and just to practice your building skills. I really recommend doing the Diorama Challenge if you haven't participated already. I can't wait to see what you guys do this month. Um, this won't be the map for next month, so it's not a teaser or anything. I don't like to use mods for the um, challenge, but this was just like a little demonstration on how to do it. I hope this helps you with setting up uh, your own maps to make little dioramas. I think the measuring out method works really, really cool with the paths. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps and thank you for watching. I'll just leave you with a few clips now of the coaster kind of just running back and forward and I'll see you soon for another episode here on my channel. Bye.